Hello, everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, from wherever you are joining me. Welcome to series two of the next Mentorship Without Barriers. In this series, I shall guide you on some of the content areas that you are required to learn for the licensing, licensing exam across the globe. Many jurisdictions across the globe require that you learn certain specific content areas before you can write the licensing exams. In this episode, I'll break the content down in detail so that when you are doing your studies or preparing for the exams, you will know what is expected for you to review. And before I do that, I'll tell you the primary objective of the licensing exams. For every licensing exam all over the world, there are two main objectives. One, the exam is designed to evaluate your ability to demonstrate your knowledge, your skill, and your competence as a registered nurse or midwife. So there are certain skill sets of a nurse, knowledge set of a nurse, and competency set of a nurse. Throughout your training, you have learned those skills, knowledge, and competence. You are supposed to demonstrate that to the licensing board, whether it is called a council or a board in any jurisdiction, you are supposed to demonstrate that. The second one is that the one seeking the license must be able to demonstrate ability to practice nursing effectively and in a safe manner. So you want to be a registered nurse or a registered midwife or registered public health nurse, you should be able to demonstrate beyond reasonable doubt that you have the ability to practice nursing effectively and safely because in the end, we want to provide safe nursing care or healthcare delivery to the public. So whilst you are preparing for the exams, it's important to keep this concept in your mind. What is it that they require of me before they give me the license? And what they require of every single candidate is that you have to demonstrate knowledge, you have to demonstrate your skill, demonstrate your competence, and in doing so, do that effectively and in a safe manner so that the patient is not harmed. So what then are the specific content areas that we are required to revise towards the exams? You will recall that during your studies in the nursing school, you have learned a lot of courses that you can't even remember some of their names. And in some cases, you just managed to pass the exams. And here, you are required to demonstrate knowledge before, before the license is given to you. The question then is, is it all the courses that you learn in the nursing school that the board or the council that is going to give you the license require that you must demonstrate? The answer is no. And that is why this mentorship series is here to guide you to know the right courses to learn and the content to review prior to the exam so that you are well equipped to answer the question and get your license. Come with me and I'll break down now for you. The breakdown of the papers, and I'm using Ghana as a case study. In Ghana, you are required to write five papers before you are given the license. Unlike other parts of the world, it's just one paper. So for Ghana, it's five papers. And the five papers run across the four major cadre of nurses. That's general nursing, midwifery, public health, and mental health nurse. So if you take general nursing, for example, you are required to answer, if you are a general nurse, you are required to answer 180 multiple choice questions in medical nursing. The midwife is supposed to answer 180 multiple choice questions in pediatric and obstetric anatomy and management of high-risk tumor. The public health nurse is supposed to answer 180 multiple choice questions and principles of disease, uh, principles of public health uh, management and administration. That's what their paper one, and you realize I had the same weight in terms of the questions, even though the concept vary. For paper two, you are required to do surgical nursing. For uh, if you are a general nurse, which is 180 multiple choice questions. 
And if you are a registered midwife, you do 180 multiple choice questions for midwifery. And the public health nurse will do 180 multiple choice questions for principles of disease management and control. Then all the cadres will write general paper, which is also 100 multiple choice questions. And then there's a practical that vary based on the, the, the course that you are doing or your program. So general nurses, they are practical. Nursing is based on, you know, medical conditions, surgical conditions and pediatric conditions. So they will take them to medical ward, they will do a care plan, and then they will do two, you know, medical procedures. We will take them to surgical ward, we do a care plan and do two surgical procedures. But mind you, the, the medical cases include adult and pediatric medical cases, and the surgical cases equally include adult and pediatric surgical cases. So you can be placed in any of those domains. Then for the midwife, they will do basic nursing practicals with the care plan and also do midwifery practicals with the care plan. Then when you come to the public health nurses, they will do home visits with the care plan. So you will have to identify an area where the school is doing their practicals. They are home visiting practicals. So they go there and do the home visit in the vicinity and then draw the care plan at the home of the patient or the client. We call them client at that level. Then they will, go back, they will come back to the clinic, the child welfare clinic and do procedures. And then also we'll do a basic nursing procedure at the clinical area and draw a care plan. So in, in all, all of them will end up doing, you know, uh, uh, four procedures and two care plans based on their specialization areas. Then comes the fifth paper, which is the care, care, plan, care study, patient and family-centered case study. This one requires that each candidate will pick a case of his or her choice within the domain that he specializes in or she specializes. And then you will write the case study. And the case study is based on the concept of ADOKI, that assessment, diagnosis, objective and outcome criteria, planning, implementation, and evaluation. So if you are a general nurse, you are required to pick medical cases, surgical cases, and pediatric cases. Then you draw the care plan on it. You draw the case study, rather. So you will start from chapter one to chapter five, and then you follow the nursing process criteria to do that. Similarly, the midwife will also pick uh, a healthy pregnant woman and follow the woman till she delivers, and also write a case study on that. And then the public health nurse will pick public health cases. So here we are talking about public health diseases or public health interests or conditions of public interest. It can be teenage pregnancy, it can be drug abuse, it can be alcoholism or alcoholic individual, it could be it could be preterm baby, malnourished child, it could be a child with congenital abnormalities, it could be uh, the infections like HIV patient or tuberculosis patient. Then you would develop the care study on that particular patient. And this case study should be ready to be submitted on the day of your registration. Without the case study, your registration cannot be processed. So whilst you are preparing for it, the case study must be done, and then it will go along with your registration. So let's break it down in details. So we are going to start with medical nursing, what goes into medical nursing if you are preparing for that. If you take medical nursing, for example, they are going to ask conditions that if you enter any ordinary medical ward, whether male medical ward or female medical ward, in any level of care, whether at the primary level or the tertiary level or the quaternary level of hospital delivery, you will find this category of patients there. So, for example, endocrine system, you will talk about diabetes mellitus, you talk about hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism, which is the thyroid problems. You talk about hyperparathyroidism and hypoparathyroidism, which is the parathyroid problems. You talk about the uh, the Addison's disease, which is the adrenal problem. So Addison's disease, Cushing syndrome, and then few chromocytoma. You try, you try and review the concepts around all. That. So when you review the endocrine system, the next system you should be thinking about is the cardiovascular system. So talk about cardiovascular. So we are talking about blood disorders, heart disorders, and blood vessel disorders. The most common 
heart problem or you know heart disease is the heart failure. The most common blood vessel disease is hypertension, and the most common blood disorder is anemia. So when you are revising, don't forget about these content areas. Again, you have to also review the uh, central nervous system problem. So apoplexy or CVA, which is cerebral vascular accident or stroke, it's important that you review that. And then don't forget about the other conditions within that. For unconscious patients, uh, cerebral aneurysms, increase in tracheal pressure, and then of course the neck problem. So you can talk about cerebral palsy, Bell's palsy, we can talk about trigeminal neuroglia. Then don't forget about the renal conditions. So renal conditions talk about renal failure, acute renal failure, and chronic renal failure, and tie that with uh, dialysis. And don't forget about uh, nephrotic syndrome, acute glomerulonephritis, and chronic glomerulonephritis. Of course, don't forget about urinary tract infections. Then gastrointestinal system, so, so one of the most common conditions that when you enter any medical ward, you will find clients with such conditions. For example, peptic ulcer disease. And then, of course, liver cirrhosis, so hepatitis and that. So don't forget to review content around these areas. And of course, the respiratory conditions, including pneumonia, including asthma, including chronic bronchitis, chronic bronchiectasis, pulmonary emphysema. These are some examples of the medical conditions that you should review. This list, I must be able to issue a disclaimer here that it is not exhaustive. Doesn't mean that what I have listed here are the only conditions that you should read before the exams. But what I'm telling you is that it's going to be based on conditions you find in the medical world on a daily basis. And that is, it's very difficult for you to enter a medical ward and you won't find a patient with diabetes mellitus. You will not find a patient with heart failure. You will not find a patient with hypertension, stroke, or renal failure, or peptic ulcer disease, or liver cirrhosis, or asthma, or pneumonia. It's very difficult. And therefore, it will also be extremely difficult for the examiner who is trying to find out your knowledge, your skills, your competence to take care of such populations, not to ask questions around that. And that is logic. Therefore, when you are preparing for the exams, these six or five major systems are very, very important that we must review your conditions. What about surgery? The whole concept of surgical nursing revolves around perioperative, or if you like, theater nursing. So what do I mean by perioperative? We are talking about preparation of a patient before the surgery, preparation of a patient or care of the patient during the surgery, and care of the patient after the surgery. So we have what we call preoperative care, intraoperative care, and postoperative care. So whether the examiner want to ask you questions surrounding the concept of abdominal surgeries, whether heinous, whether uh, 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 acute abdomen, volvulus, into succession, perforations, anything the examiner want to ask, and they will, that will require surgery like laparotomy or heinous, they will want to tie it around perioperative nursing. Similarly, if it is orthopedic, where fractures, you have to do open reduction and internal fixation, for example, or skin traction or skeletal traction, for example, the examiner will tie the questions around perioperative. Again, if it's brain surgery, where the patient have had maybe a head injury and we are doing craniotomy for the patient, or the patient have developed in a, a, an aneurysm or a tumor in the brain, where we are doing craniotomy to fix the problem, you, the nurse, must know how to prepare the patient for the surgery and what specific nursing intervention to provide for such a patient after the surgery. So it's important that you actually grasp the full details of perioperative nursing or theater nursing. And this is there in the curriculum. So that within the confines of whatever the examiner wants to set the questions around, and he's trying to pull you through these areas, you will be able to provide the answer. So if they are talking about the cancers, whether it's colon cancer or it is uh, uh, breast cancer, cervical cancer, lung cancer, any of the cancers that you can think about, and there is going to be a surgery, you must be able to still apply the perioperative to it. What makes surgery a bit complicated in some cases is that this application of perioperative, a mass retreat, 
that is specific. Meaning that the interventions you will apply when it comes to craniotomy, the specific perioperative care that you provide for a client during craniotomy will slightly differ from a client who will have gone through thyroidectomy. Similarly, a client who will go through uh, thoracic surgery, maybe pneumonectomy or something, left pneumonectomy or right pneumonectomy or whatever the case may be, the kind of specific interventions that you, the nurse, must administer to such a patient will also vary. That means when you learn the general, all you need to do is to look at the specific conditions or the specific surgeries and learn the specifics and you are ready for the exams. I shall be sharing more tricks into details about some of these areas and I'll be releasing a series of lectures that will cover some of these things to guide you as you are preparing. Draw your attention to some of the specific areas. The other courses include pharmacology, nursing itself, maternal and newborn and pediatrics, and mental health, and of course, public health that you have to resume. Don't forget that the nursing, don't forget our basic nursing, the ethics and the law, advanced nursing, procedures, including blood transfusion, including parasynthesis abdominis, including total parenteral nutrition, and you know, NG2 feeding, catheter care, among all other advanced nursing procedures, you must make time to revise them. You really want to pass the exams. What about the case of midwifery? Like you saw earlier, they also have to look at pediatrics. So the development of a baby, growth and development, you know, where you talk about the fetal scalp, the fetal development, the stages of fetal development, fetal circulation, uh, fertilization and implantation, you know, and all that. You have to go back and review it. Then when the baby comes out immediately, the immediate newborn care, what we call the essential newborn care, you know, you should be able to provide that. And if the children develop some high risk problems, including birth asthesia or neonatal joints or neonatal sepsis or infection, you should be able to provide the necessary interventions to save those babies. Indeed, there are some pregnancies that become, uh, some labor that become complicated and the mother, uh, the labor may prolong, the baby may end up developing some birth injuries, including nerve injuries like uh, brachial plexus palsy, or cerebral palsy, or Epps palsy, or Coulombis palsy. Some of them need to be given some immediate care. And therefore, you, the midwife, must have the technical know-how to provide them. Once you revise around this area, you should be able to sit for the paper that is pediatric and obstetric anatomy. And of course, the word obstetric means don't forget about the obstetric anatomical aspect. Here, Margaret Miles, and of course, Sylvia Vera, textbooks should be your true Bibles. When you have these two books as a midwife, you will be able to write the exams. When it comes to the general nursing, Sounders, Bruno and Sada, Kaplan, these three books, any of them that you have, you should be able to go through the exams. If you take Bruno and Sada and you scratch it, they, they give you a site, you can even go and have access to some of the questions. You can try your hands on it. The same apply to Sounders and the same apply to Kaplan. So the midwife, the second paper is a midwifery paper where the midwives are supposed, you know that midwifery is divided into three major areas, which is pregnancy, labor, and per period. And what is preg the pregnancy is divided into two, which is the normal pregnancy and abnormal pregnancy. So normal pregnancy, we are talking about the normal events that will occur during the course of pregnancy. The midwife needs to know all that, okay? All the stages of pregnancy in terms of first trimester, second trimester, and third trimester. And when you learn all that, you learn the normal event that unfold during the course of the pregnancy. And of course, then learn the abnormal pregnancy where sometimes the woman will develop certain complications in the course of the pregnancy. When that happens, you, the midwife, should have the skill to be able to identify the abnormalities. For example, Bleeding in the course of pregnancy, that's abnormal. So placenta, previa, all the stages of placenta, previa, placenta, abrosio, any other, you know, abnormalities in the course of pregnancy, you should be able to learn it and know it. Then labor, the same thing applies to labor, the normal labor and abnormal labor, you must be able to learn all the concepts surrounding that. 
first stage of labor, second stage of labor, third stage and fourth stage, all the normalities and abnormalities, you must learn them and get ready for the exams. The same thing applies to papyrium, immediate papyrium, early papyrium, and of course, the, 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 the late papyrium. So within the first 24 hours, what can you do? And then afterwards, the first week, what can you do? And after that, after the six weeks, what can you do for the patient? All these things, the midwife must revise around that and tie that to antenatal care, tie that to family planning, and you are ready for the middle. Of course, they should not forget about obstetric pharmacology, medical surgical nursing procedures, uh, conditions, uh, the nursing is a basic ethics and professional adjustment. They are not required to go into advanced nursing, but basic nursing, ethics and the law, professional adjustment is critical. Mental health and geriatrics, yes. And of course, uh, public health and community health nursing also very important for military practice. So these are the content that you have to review if you are ready to actually go for a licensing exam. Now, public health. Public Health also have three written papers, and the three written papers include uh, Public Health uh, uh, National Administration, okay, Public Health Management and, and Administration. Then we also have uh, uh, Maternal and Child Health. So all these courses are under the, the, that paper, Public Health Administration, Principles of Public Health. Then we have Reproductive Health and Family Planning, Home Visits, Personal and Environmental Health, community health-based planning services. So as a public health nurse, you should be able to set up a, a chief campaign. You know the procedure of establishing a CWC, for example, a child welfare clinic. You should know how to conduct your routine home visit, your special home visit, and how to take care of the home visit back and all the things in the home visit back, the compartments and all that. Reproductive health and family planning, all the family planning uh, services, you know them and how to, the advantages and disadvantages. So you must go through these areas to get yourself ready for this particular paper. If you don't revise them, you get there, you will find yourself wanting. Of course, the second paper for the public health people is the principles of disease management and control. And this paper seeks to look at diseases in general. Now, what many students make mistake, they think that this particular course is only for communicable diseases. But the concept of the course is, Principles of disease management and control. I remember some year back, one group had a challenge. They thought that that is how the questions are going to be. And when they come there, they were asking some non communicable disease and then they will complete. No, the course say principles of disease management and control. They didn't say principles of communicable disease management. So when you are learning, broaden your mind, especially when you come to the concept of you know uh, disease causation. The theory surrounding that, like the epidemiological triad, for example, that talked about the agent, the host, and the environment. So there are agents that can cause infection, not necessarily biological agents. There are physical agents, there are environmental agents that can cause an infection or that can cause a disease, not necessarily the biological agents like viruses, the bacteria, and the fungi. And you must appreciate that as a public health nurse. And then you look at the natural history of a disease the pre-pathogenesis phase and the pathogenesis phase, how they relate and leading to the development of a disease. It's important that you, the public health nurse, try to learn around that, those concepts. Now, of course, all the concepts around the incubation period and mode of transmission, airborne droplet, and all that, you must be able to learn that. Because if you look at incubation period, we have the latent incubation period and we have the active incubation period. And within the latency, there are subcategories within that which you have to learn around all these concepts and get ready for the exams. Of course, don't forget about disease prevention, the concept of disease prevention. So the, the, the traditional levels model has been modified to include primordial. So now you have primordial prevention, primary prevention, secondary prevention, and tertiary prevention. What would be your role as the public health nurse in all these levels of disease prevention? And of course, don't forget about the means model of disease prevention. The BEANS model of disease prevention is very important. That will help. The BEANS model that will help you to be able to prevent disease. And I've also heard about the radical political model used in some parts of the world, especially during the COVID, where the uh, political they use political power, use the state security agencies to force people to stay indoors. Especially in the case of the COVID, we saw that people were quarantined that they shouldn't come out. If you come out, they will let police or military people chase you back. 
a curfew or something. Those are radical methods in controlling disease. Okay. And they are used in you know some parts of the world to prevent disease. Of course, in a more liberal democratic dispensation, it will be difficult to apply that method of disease prevention. Of course, when you are also learning about this particular uh, preparing for this paper, don't forget about the science of vaccines. So what vaccines are, the various types of vaccines, live vaccines, live attenu attenuated vaccines, inactive vaccines, recombinant vaccines, polysaccharide vaccines, and all that. Don't forget about the various aspects of how vaccines are synthesized, how they are developed, the science around that. Don't forget to review the concept surrounding immunity, you know, active immunity, passive immunity, natural active, natural passive, artificial active, artificial passive, and how clinically all these can be dissociated and applied. Don't forget to go back and look at the concept of vaccine management in terms of vaccine supply chain management or whole chain management and all the equipment that are that you can use to provide the care of the vaccines and protect the vaccines and ensure the potency of the vaccines. Don't forget to look at the VVM concept, the, v the vaccine valve monitor number management concept, which you use to monitor the progress of the vaccine. It's a sensitive indicator that is on the, on the valve of the vaccine that will show the cumulative heat exposure of the vaccine. And therefore, we are able to lose that, look at the stages of the color that changes on the valve, and we are able to tell whether the vaccine is potent or not before we administer it within, it, for the, within the population. You, the public health nurse, must be able to revise all these concepts before the license can be given to you to go and practice. Again, don't forget to look at immunization and all the concepts surrounding immunization. So we are talking about, you know, the, 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 the immunization monitoring uh, system, how to manage immunization or how to set up an immunization clinic, you know, whether it is for immigration immunization clinic or it's a static clinic or an outreach clinic, all the activities that will get towards improving the expanded program on immunization and how to write a comprehensive report. And so all the calculation in terms of coverage, the dropout rate and all that wastage factor, you should have the technical know-how to go around all these concepts. When you review that, you are ready for the paper. Of course, don't forget about the categories of infections. So you talk about waterborne, foodborne, airborne, droplet, uh, sexually transmitted infections. You talk about emerging infections and re-emerging infections, neglected tropical diseases. All these concepts go around them and learn them because we go and see uh, last year, you we go and found Ebola in the questions. And if you are not careful, you may think that they are not infections we should be studying. Go and review them. And of course, look at the concept of disease control, all the principles surrounding disease control. So vector control, environmental control, uh, disease surveillance, vaccine, behavior modification, among others. You should be able to remind yourself about this concept and get ready for the paper. So these among others that you should be able to review. And let me also say that if you want to revise this, I have a book in this area and I'll leave a link here. It's online, you can buy it and then you will also be able to you know, prepare for this. Also, you can look for public health in the tropics. Okay, it's a textbook that will also help you. And there are a lot of tests around that you can also use to prepare towards this part of the paper. There are other courses that the public health nurse must also study, including medical, surgical, nursing, basic ethics, professional adjustment, obstetric or maternal, and then newborn and pediatrics are all important, of course, mental health and pediatric nursing. Now, you have seen the course content, the digital course content that you are expected to learn per your CADA or your domain or your specialization. If you are a general nurse, I'm giving you the details. If you are a midwife, I provided the details for you. If you're a public health nurse, I provided the details for you. In another video, I provide the details for you know the other cadres. Now, some also want to write uh, NCLEC exams. And let me say that, in fact, if you have gone through this Ghana system, the NCLEC should not be difficult for you. Because most of the courses that are in the content required for you to learn and come and write the NCLEX exams, you have gone through them already. You only need to pay particular attention to their style of questions and then you prepare. And then the strategies I'm going to be sharing through this mentorship series 
should be able to guide you to be able to pass that exams as well. So it's a two sword. You pass this one and you use that same skills to go and pass the NCLEX exams. And I'm here to provide that mentorship. So medical surgical nursing, you saw that when I was mentioning the content areas for all the cadets, it ran across. So cardiovascular, respiratory, gastrointestinal, endocrine, nervous, you saw that it was running across. Then maternal uh, newborn, which is uh, obstetric and then pediatrics and all that, and newborn care. So pregnancy, labor, perperium, and newborn care, essential newborn care, and the concept around that, you should be able to remind yourself if you want to pass this particular one. Of course, don't forget about uh, pediatric nursing, growth and development, and management of common childhood problems. They are not going to ask you all of them, but the common ones. So like I said, it's jurisdictional. The jurisdiction you find yourself, they will look at the conditions that are peculiar to that, and then they will ask you those ones. But of course, there are certain conditions that run across irrespective of the jurisdiction. And therefore, when you are preparing, it is easy for you to be able to synthesize that and you are able to sit for the exams. Mental health nursing, you should be looking at areas of mood disorders, you know, areas of anxiety disorders, areas of psychotic disorders, and you should be able to prepare yourself for the exams. Of course, geriatric care or geriatric nursing is important. Disease conditions or problems within such populations, you should be able to understand how to take care of them. Pharmacology, don't forget about that. The common drugs that we use on a daily basis in the clinical practice, you should know them. The, the cardiovascular medication, so the antihypertensive, for example, so you can talk about the the lysinop, uh, the ACE inhibitors, the calcium channel channel blockers, you know, and all and so on, and the vasodilators and all that. You have to go back and revise the content, look at the mechanism of actions, how the drug work, and then the, the the desired effect and the side effect of all those medications. Don't forget about the antibiotics. You have to go back and revise them. Okay. Don't forget about you know the gastrointestinal medications to talk about maybe peptic ulcer, the drugs that you can use to manage that. So you have to go back to your pharmacology and revise it if indeed you really want to pass these exams. And of course, revise your nursing science. And the nursing science here, we are talking about the fundamentals of nursing, talking about the vital signs, the hygiene care, the drug administration, the assessment, the nursing process, the, 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 the fluid and electrolytes, the acid base uh, imbalance, and all that. You have to go back and review those concepts. And all these concepts are already in medicine. They are in medicine one. If you actually have gone through the Ghana system, you would have learned this concept in medical medicine one. And this will not be anything that can frighten you. So if you are well prepared, you can actually pass the exams. In my next episode, I'll be discussing with you strategies how to develop a, a steady plan. Because without a plan, you cannot you know, be able to pass the exams. And so subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be providing you more details, information on how to pass your licensing exam and how to you know, mentor you towards achieving your career goals uh, going forward. But all what I am saying is that you need to know but even just knowing and learning and knowing is not enough. You must be able to apply what you are learning to become a good nurse. And even when you are willing to apply, it's still not enough. You should be able to, you know, to apply that. And that's why you are so fortunate. The majority of you are already working and then you are studying. So what you learn in the clinical area, you, uh, the, the classroom, you can easily apply that to the clinical area. And what you learn in the clinical area, you can go to the classroom and ask questions for clarifications. And by so doing, you will be able to holistically picture what you are learning and apply it. Because every single question in the licensing exams, it doesn't matter the jurisdiction, it's a paper patient. They are asking you a particular question, but that question is actually a patient. So if they tell you that a client report to the hospital with a complaint of paroxysmal shooting pain in one side of the face, if you have reviewed the central nervous system and you have reviewed the nerves, you would have come across the largest cranial nerve in the human body called the trigeminal nerve, which innervates the face and the part of the jaw. And that nerve, when it is severed or damaged, the individual will experience a paroxysmal shooting pain. And when you set in the objectives, you will find it. But if you don't review the concept, it will be difficult for you to actually you know, go through the exam. So in my next episode, 
I'll be taking you through how to develop a study plan and how to review this content area because it's not every single thing of this that we are required to go and sit down and be learning. There are tricks around it and our strategies around it, how to you know, identify the specific information. Because the exams is about specific knowledge. It's not about general knowledge. What you can do as a nurse that any other person, all right, cannot do. What you can do as a nurse that even if they give it to any other kid within the health delivery system, the person can do it, except you. That Those are the unique features that the council want to find out. Any board uh, uh, of, of nursing want to find out. And if you are able to demonstrate that knowledge, that competence, that skill, the license will be handed to you. I've used these strategies to guide my students to pass over the, the, the last decade that I've been practicing. And I believe you can be the next person to pass this licensing exam. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and share the good news to all your peers that there's a nurse scientist who is providing mentorship to young nurses to take over the generation without barriers. So mentorship without barriers, and then so that you also pass the licensure without any barrier. See you in my next episode. Thank you.